Hey guys, welcome to this week's training. Uh, I've, pardon me, that's my cat just jumping off of a bookshelf onto a cat holder. Oh my goodness. I decided not to go to the office today because um, my appointment canceled and I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and do our training here at the house instead of driving all the way over there. And uh, it looks like I am live, and I want to make sure that everything shows up just right, so I always get it up on my phone. Okay. So, yes, it is, and I need to get out of here so I don't hear myself twice. Okay, so uh, I was on Facebook, was it Facebook or Instagram the other day? And I came across, it's like four or five slides from Gary V on why I love selling. And when I saw it, now obviously Gary Vaynerchuk is an extrovert. Uh, he's an alpha male, et cetera, et cetera. I am more of an introvert and I also work with introverts here in the online digital world more than I do extroverts. But when I read it, I came to the realization that I actually really enjoy sales. Now, before we get to the slideshow, let me tell you how much of a journey that has been. Because I was a kid that absolutely hated the, you know, ridiculous, um, what were those things where we had to, you know, fundraise for like band or choir or whatever, and we had to sell the, you know, the food around Christmas or the, chocolate bars and all of that stuff. I hated it. I was, at the time I didn't know I was an introvert. I didn't even know what that was. Um, I just hated selling and I hated going door to door. And I think one reason I hated it is because I feared rejection. I feared the no. So my family would buy all of my candy bars. And then, you know, fast forward, um, you know, I think 2016, and I learned that my number one entrepreneurial skill is selling. And when I saw that, I actually was not happy. I was mad because I'd done the network marketing thing um, a couple times. I, you know, uh, have always owned a business, but I've never had to actually sell. And so I just hated it. I hated selling. But I have to say that seeing that that was my number one entrepreneurial skill gave me pause. It made me ask myself, okay, do I hate selling or do I hate the idea of what I think selling is? And uh, plus, in between that time and then present day, I finally, at the age of 45, realized that I'm actually um, an uh um, oh, what's it called? An introvert. And so when I figured out that I'm an introvert, then what happened is it helped me understand who I was plus my personality. And so then I entered into what I would call my own. In other words, I learned how I operate. I learned how I think. And so I began to explore what exactly is selling. And I'm going to tell you in a nutshell what selling is. It is listening, understanding, and solving problems. Selling is persuasion. And I knew I was really good at persuasion. And once I put those two things together, I understood that I actually am good at selling. So now, you know, with my business, it is a, a, a side hustle right now. It is my future. That's where I'm going but it doesn't earn me the income that's needed. So I have a part-time job in a jewelry store. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with having side hustles. Uh, I learned that from Marie Forleo. Uh, I was ashamed to tell anybody that I worked part-time anywhere because you know business people are supposed to be successful, right? And so I felt that by working somewhere, I was not as successful and I shouldn't be respected or listened to because of that. And so I learned that she worked as a bartender, I don't know how many years while she, she was building her business. Same thing with Amy Porterfield and Jenna Kutcher. So I learned that there's nothing wrong with the side hustle. And so now I proudly say 
that I work in a jewelry store part-time and I have to sell. Now, I'm really good at it because I don't sell in a typical idea and mindset that we have. I watch body language. I know the personality of the person I'm dealing with, usually within five minutes, and I adjust myself to them, but I always have this goal in mind, and that is to help them, to guide them to the decision of the purchase they want to make, and then also give them an out if it doesn't look like the purchase they want is good for them, or if it looks like um, they're not happy with it. In other words, it won't benefit them to the degree that it needs to. So it's never about earning that other dollar. It is about making sure that the person I'm helping is comfortable with me, that I guide them, not push them, and that I guide them to a purchase that they feel comfortable with and that fits in their core values. So I don't want anyone to spend 40 years thinking something's wrong with them, of spending 40 years trying to figure out um, what they're good at and, and avoiding what they actually are good at. I don't want anybody to think, again, that they have to be fixed and, and, and to figure this out at such a late age. And so if you're younger than me, you need to know how you're designed and you need to know what your strengths are. So before I get in the slides, let me give you two resources. The first one is TonyRobbins.com forward slash DISC, D-I-S-C. Get your personality profile. Look at your top three values under that profile because that will really show what motivates you. Then, uh, are you an introvert or an extrovert? Then go over to Gallup and take the BP10 assessment, which is the builder profile, and find out what your entrepreneurial strengths are. Then go to fascinate or howyoufascinate.com and find out what your fascination language or your fascination advantage is. How do you best operate as a business person? Because then, sorry, because then you can help your clients in that place of how you're most comfortable. And so you'll, you'll not feel pushy, you'll, you'll not feel salesy, uh, salesy or sleazy. And every salesperson or business person has to sell because every business person has to persuade and you have to market yourself. That's all there is to it. You have to market yourself and brand yourself, but the key is yourself, not how you think you should be. What is unique about you? Take those three things I just gave you Form that picture of who you are as a business person and then market the benefits that you give other people because of how you're designed. That's what makes you unique, okay? So now you may be a person where you uh, take the entrepreneurial uh, assessment and know that sales is not your best area. That's fine. It doesn't need to be your best area, but you can dang sure learn how to persuade effectively even if selling is not your top entrepreneurial skill or even in the top three. And so I've got a free series actually, uh, Persuade Without a Word, that you can take at any time. It's a three-part video series that will kind of give you some insight into this. Okay, so with all of that said, back to the slideshow. So when I saw the, the title of the slideshow, which you're about to see, which is Why I Love Selling, and it dawned on me, I like it. I actually like it now. And so I guess my point in this long introduction is you got to like what you're doing. And if you don't, what if the key is not that you're doing the wrong thing? It's that you need more information and knowledge on how you operate and then the skill that is needed to carry out your business purpose. Okay? I find a lot of people don't like stuff they don't know. If you have knowledge, then you'll know for, for sure if you like what you're doing or you don't. But all I know is that you should love the business you have. You should love getting new clients. You should love telling people what you do. You should be able to do it with confidence because you're passionate about it. 
And so if you're lacking in those areas, it might be because you're lacking knowledge, you're lacking skill, personality restraints, or you could be in the wrong business, okay? All right, so enough of that. Let's go over into the slides. Okay, so let me get over here where I can put them in full screen mode. Here we go. I love selling, here's why. And again, this is from Gary Vaynerchuk. So we're gonna go through these uh, four or five slides really fast. Sales is fun when you sell something you believe in. Now, when you sell something you don't truly care about or believe in, it gets a lot harder. I teach this to my um, introverts in my uh, work your biz like a boss because there are two musts for introverts in sales uh, and that is you must uh, love what you do and be passionate about it. And oh my gosh, the other, <laughs> the other thing just escaped me. But the point is that whatever, oh, you must believe in it. So you must believe in what you do and you must love what you do. And so if you do not believe in the product or service that you're selling, you're as an introvert, guys, you might as well just stop. You're not going to be able to do it. But if you're an extrovert, you could get away with it for a while, but eventually you'll have to find something you actually like. But if you love and believe in your product or service, it can actually be fun. And the reason why, I'm just going to go a little bit deeper, is because you know that your product or service helps other people. And for introverts especially, and extroverts too, but especially introverts, we don't do well with not being authentic and we don't do well without there being significant results and help to another person. So a lot of times for the expert, just closing the cell and the challenge of that gives them a dopamine release and they love it. Uh, but for the introverts, we're more bonding and oxytocin driven. And so we actually have to really believe in ourselves, believe in our product and truly love it and know that we're helping people. And, I, and I'm trying not to di diss, you know, extroverts because, you know, a lot of extroverts do care a lot about people, but it's just the way our brains operate. They're a little bit different. Uh, and so I just want to kind of, you know, clarify those differences, especially since a lot of you are uh, introverted. So if you're extroverted, I hope you don't think I'm ganging up on you because I know you care about people too. I think the competition and the game can sometimes be fun for extroverts. Uh, okay. So the best sell strategy is branding. Some people think I'm against selling because I give out all of my content for free. But if you build a strong brand, you can outsell any salesman any day of the week. Okay, so what he's talking about is branding is really important. And I have uh, six steps to irresistible marketing uh, that you can get no charge at all at my website that guides you literally how to brand yourself in a story-based format, which is what all great companies like Apple and Amazon and Instagram and all of them have done. But what he's talking about here is give your best stuff away for free. Become an expert in your field and get that fascination advantage that you, you know, that, of, of how you do business and filter all of your content, all of your marketing, and all of the stuff you give away for free through your strengths, okay? So when you build a brand through your strengths and what makes you happy, then what happens is you are authentic and you're real and people will remember you and hire you above other people that charge uh, nickel and dime you basically for every little piece of advice that they give so the best sell strategy is to give away your best stuff for free, find out how you do business, and build your brand around both of those things. The next one is ask but have zero expectations. Selling isn't about being pushy or turning a no into a yes. It's about asking but have zero expectations about how the results will play out. That is so true. Number one, I find introverts especially have a rough time with the asking. So it's like you go through the whole process of presenting or pitching your product or service. And then when you get to the point where it's time to ask, 
I don't, it's like this thing can come over us introverts where we all of a sudden get hesitant and we don't even want to ask if they want to buy our product or service. So basically what's happened is number one, you've done a disservice by not giving them an opportunity to choose to buy your product or service because you know it's beneficial and will help their lives. And then number two, you basically wasted their time and yours, which is to me disrespect. And so when you get to the end of your presentation, here's a very simple way to ask. How do you see this product or service in your life? And if you don't, that's okay. Just tell me no, and it will not hurt my feelings. Now, you have to be prepared for that no, though, and not take a no as personal. It is a professional decision. It is not a personal decision, and it's not anything against your value. So if you get a no, it is not a value statement of your skills, your ability, or who you are as a person. It is simply that that product or service does not fit them or they don't think it does. But as you continue to brand yourself and to give away your best stuff for free, you may eventually win over a no. But you don't have to be pushy and turn a no into a yes. And by providing them a way out, then you'll have a more clear cut picture. And it won't be this awkward thing of you trying to follow up and call them later and they're not returning your call and then when they see you they avoid you and all that stuff and, the, and this is especially important because dominantly you're going to be dealing with 65 percent of the population which are s's and s's are very humble tactful and diplomatic they don't want to hurt people's feelings and so often they will not give you a straight no and so if you can read body language but also if you can give them that out then you will know very plainly if it's a yes or no. Sometimes, and most of the time, an S will say, I need to talk to my spouse. And typically, they're not trying to string you along. They literally will need to talk to their spouse because family is the most important thing for an S. However, sometimes they can use that so they can let you down gently. So again, if you say, how do you see this product or service fitting in your life? And if you don't, it's okay to say no and you will not hurt my feelings. And if you give them that disclaimer, you may get more uh, straightforward communication from the S's. And then he ends with who else loves sales. So let me get a switch back over. And eventually I'm going to get the hang of this thing, guys, where it doesn't take me so long to get started and stuff um, when, I, when I first start. So that right there is the epitome of what my life has looked like in the last three years and that is learning that sales is not being pushy it's not turning a no into a yes it's not aggravating people it's not hounding people it's not following people all over the place sales is simply persuasion that has a mutual benefit for both you and your potential client but also has the respect and honor in the conversation that provides them an out if they don't want to buy your product or your service. They say it takes a hundred touches to get a closed deal. Now, another thing that I think is really important is, again, we want to be authentic. Don't trick people to sit down with you. Don't say, you know, I need to practice, which I've done that in the past, or, you know, I need your feedback and your opinion on something. If you're going to sit down and discuss a product or service with them, hoping to sell to them, you need to tell them straight out, I would like to sit down with you and discuss a product that I think will be beneficial to you or a service that will be beneficial to you. I will end up asking you if you think this product or service will fit in your life and I want to be upfront and straightforward with you so that you know that that will happen by the time we end this conversation. That way you're going to the situation with them knowing how straightforward you've been and that they will be looking at a product or service with the potential to buy it. People don't like to be tricked. And let me tell you, if you try to trick people and you try to follow those um, typical salesman training ways, you will not only lose uh, clients, you will also lose friends. And then word will begin to spread about how you operate. To me, the best policy is to be authentic, to be straightforward, but... Another key that I do, and I do it because I want to, it's not necessarily to get a client, it's I absolutely love 
helping people. And so, especially in business, that's my passion, is business owners. I love entrepreneurs. I think you guys are the hardest working people I know. Uh, you, you carry on your shoulders all of it. It all rests on you. And you have just this thing about you that doesn't quit. And so, that's why I love entrepreneurs. I also see that we struggle trying to figure it out. We struggle trying to get this thing done. And, you know, we have so many questions and obstacles. And how do I do this? Will I ever figure it out? I mean, there's just so many things that entrepreneurs have to press through and push through to be successful. So respect to all of you. But I will just go around and visit with people and see how they're doing and how I can offer any expertise for free. I, I will literally go to clients or to go to my um, potential clients and I want to help them even if they never hire me. I want to help them because they may not need me, but they'll know someone else that does and they'll know that number one, I will take care of their friend well because I genuinely care and number two, they know I know what I'm talking about because I've been working with them for free. So. Uh, that's another thing, too. Don't always think that every meeting you have has to end in that cell. Provide value. Give your best stuff away for free. Find out how you do business and be authentic and straightforward and genuine and provide that way out at the end of the cell if you need to. So anyway, I hope this stuff helps you because it's helped me a lot. And if you have any questions, if you have any comments, I would love to hear about it.